Hello and welcome back to Cost Management. This week we will be looking at decision making and relevant information. All right, people, what we have been working towards this, uh, really this whole semester has been how do we understand the different cost profiles, the different revenue profiles, how do we understand different tools, both qualitative and quantitative, and now let's make some decisions. In real life, nobody is gonna come to you and say, hey, I have this cost volume profit analysis I'd like you to do. No, your bosses, your clients, people are gonna have some problems and you are gonna add value, uh, AKA job security, AKA uh, money in your pocket by solving people's problems and it's fun. So let us let us get into it. We're gonna be looking, this, uh, this video is on relevant costs. So figuring out what costs are relevant to our analysis and which ones aren't. Management often needs to decide between several courses of action. Should I do this or this? Perhaps this or this or this. So typically it's best to analyze the outcome of each decision, both quantitatively and qualitatively. Yes, qualitatively. Um, also sometimes students come to me and say, hey, is this gonna be a theory or, uh, or like a quant type of uh, course or test? The, this is senior level accounting now. So your quant and qual, your theory and application, they blend together because you are adding value and solving problems. So I always welcome all the questions, uh, and I know I use that, that voice, uh, <laughs> but it's really just to emphasize the point that uh, it's just, it's now a continuum. Like it's quant and qual, it's theory, application, and it's not just a continuum, pardon me, but like a loop, and they feed into each other. So it is absolutely best to analyze the outcome of each decision quantitatively and qualitatively to perform a strong quant analysis over potential revenues and costs. We only look at relevant revenues and costs. There is a lot of information out there. So part of your job as a decision maker, part of your job as an analyst is to only look at items relevant to the matter at hand. So what are some rules of thumb? A cost or revenue, cash flow, is relevant only if it has not yet happened yet, that is, it will occur in the future, and the cash flow is different from each of the alternatives picked. So if you have, say, five decisions to pick from, or more likely in this case, we'll, in this course, we'll be looking at, you know, two, if the cash flow is gonna be the same, whether you pick option A or option B, it's not relevant, because your decision, you're picking A over B, or you're picking B over A, doesn't impact the cash flow. There's no difference. So therefore, it's not relevant and we can ignore it, uh, which really helps streamline our analysis so that we can really get down and figure out, okay, what's the impact if I do this? And what's the impact if I do this? When performing analysis, certain types of costs are regularly considered. So things that you may not have seen before or maybe heard of, or maybe you have worked with them a ton, uh, start looking at patterns. So for example, we are gonna be factoring in opportunity costs. We'll talk more about the definition of this later, but essentially it's the best foregone, and pardon me, the second best uh, foregone option if you go with your current option. So what are you missing out on? Something I like to think about here is say you have uh, two friend groups and one friend group is going to go out to a concert. The other friend group is going to go out to a picnic. Well, if you pick going to the picnic, you're going to miss out on going to the concert. And if you go to the concert, you're going to miss out on going to the picnic. Both have their own quant and qualitative factors. Um, but the thing is you had two, uh, two good options. Um, and one was just slightly better, but there's a cost to not, there's a cost to going with the one option over the other. And that is the opportunity cost. To put it in context that's likely more relevant um, for you, uh, especially now that we are huh, in, in our online environment, um, <laughs> the, there might not be any picnics or concerts uh, right now. It's also winter. Um, some uh, An example that my econ prof used my first semester of university, so a long, long time ago, uh, he said, there's an opportunity cost to you being here in my classroom right now. He's like, you can be out making a job or working a job, making 30, 40, 50, $60,000 a year, uh, depending on where you are and what kind of work it is. So 
not only does the cost of you being in class include the tuition and the gas it took for you to get here and the food that you're eating right now, although one could say you'd have to eat food either way and therefore that's irrelevant. Um, he said, you're also a cost of being here as a cost of not working full time or not working that job that you would have had you come to school. And that would have been an example of an opportunity cost because it's the second best option. So another type of cost that we're looking at rules of thumb, we always include opportunity costs and we always ignore some costs. Uh, so some costs are money that has already been spent in the past and that you cannot recover. Uh, an example of a sunk cost might be, <laughs> uh, I went on vacation. Um, I went on vacation a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a Baltic Sea cruise, my first cruise, and um, they're interesting. Uh, as you know, people that have traveled a decent amount, um, it was our first cruise and it was really neat to go see. Uh, we landed in, I believe it was St. Petersburg, Russia. And in order to get into Russia, you had to, and off the boat, you had to purchase uh, like a uh, like a tour, like a tour from one of their uh, approved tour companies. Not necessarily on the boat, but just like a Russian approved tour company. So um, we bought a two day tour because we were in that port for two days. And after the first day, we were like, okay, we have seen Russia. Um, and of course we hadn't seen it all. Um, the thing is that the day was very long. Um, it was with a smaller tour group, so it wasn't super big and it wasn't like a private tour. And, you know, it just wasn't, we felt like we saw enough of the palaces. Um, we saw a lot of the beauty. We saw a lot of the parks. We saw a lot. Um, but we were also really tired and the thought of getting up the next day at 530 to go do it again. Um, you know, we weighed the pros and cons, but one of the things we didn't weigh was the fact that we had paid for two days and that there was no way of getting back that second day if we didn't go. Yes, um, <laughs> definitely. Um, and I'll talk about this in a little bit. You have the human inclination of trying to make something worth your money. But really, uh, when I looked at it, I was like, oh man, I would rather just stay on the boat, go by the pool, have some drinks and eat some food and, you know, maybe go to the arcade. Uh, and that's what I want to do today. And if I had gone to Russia for a second day, I would have missed out on that. So I would have missed out on that really good opportunity cost. And when I looked at it, the quant and the qual, looking at only relevant costs, we decided to stay on the boat and we had a really good day. Uh, do I still feel a little twinge of like, Ugh, because of the quote unquote wasted money? Sure. But the money was already spent. It was already gone. Um, and the most important thing to do then is just to enjoy your vacation. Okay. So now when we've kind of seen our patterns, we see our types of costs and revenues to ignore, uh, our top types of costs and revenues to include, we now have to determine, are they one time or are they recurring? Then once we've understand the classification of our cost and re reven revenues, uh, we need to determine these, uh, an analysis tool in order to come up with an action guidance. So we're gonna be seeing um, tools and uh, more so uh, good old fashioned cash flow. Uh, perhaps it's we, uh, perhaps it's uh, lumpy cash over time. So perhaps we're looking at an NPV. Uh, perhaps we look at an IRR. Uh, there's just all types of different um, tools that we can use to use, but just put that on your radar. With more practice, we will get more and more comfy with which ones to use in which scenario. Now, the non-quantitative factors AKA qualitative factors. While discussion in accounting contexts usually focus on quantitative costs and revenues, it is equally important to remember the qualitative factors. Qualitative factors are pieces of information that do not have direct impacts on the numeric analysis. For example, or pardon me, that is, uh, they don't immediately generate revenues or incur costs. Typical qualitative factors focus on the decision's alignment with company strategy, employee engagement, vendor reliance, those sorts of things. Some qualitative factors can absolutely override a substantial quantitative benefit. So for example, a decision might be profitable, but, the, but it risks the life of an employee, therefore should not be pursued. Okay, time for a question. You are considering an expansion of your manufacturing business using a, piece, <laughs> using a piece of land you have just inherited. You can either build a medium-sized facility or a small facility. To date, you have spent $10,000 on lawyer's fees to organize the transfer of the land. 
If you pursue the medium facility, $2 million in renovations will be required. Four staff will be hired at salaries of $50,000 per year, and you will spend $15,000 a year on utilities. If you opt for the small facility, renovations of $750,000 will be required. Only three staff will be hired at salaries of $40,000 per year, and you will spend $7,000 on utilities. Which of the above costs is not relevant to the analysis? Is it A, utilities, B, the lawyer's fee, C, renovation costs, or D, staffing costs? The answer is B. Unlike all the other potential cash flows, the fees spent on lawyers have already been incurred. Since the money has already been spent and cannot be retrieved, and also doesn't alternate, um, pardon me, and also isn't different um, per either uh, option, it is a sunk cost and therefore not relevant. As I mentioned before, sometimes you may hear people say they want to ensure they get their money's worth. Remember, this is an emotional rationalization, not a business one. Once the money is spent and cannot be recovered, it is in the past and therefore does not impact future revenues or costs and therefore for should not be factored into our analysis. We will absolutely be revisiting sunk costs later on, uh, but right now I suggest you start thinking about sunk costs you may have seen in your own life, perhaps at work or perhaps personal costs you have incurred. What happened? What decisions were made? Stories are always welcome and I'm only an email or office hours away. I'll also be in your next video. I'll see you there.